फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन वी आर लाइव नाउ सर यस मिशेल गो एड hello and a warm welcome to all of you a big thank you for each and every one of you for being here with us today we are pleased to be able to welcome all the, all those of you who have been with us for a very long time as well as those who are new to the bombay orthopedic society we also welcome you to the wireof max 2022 curtain raiser in today's curtain raiser we would like to highlight the contribution to our learning and academics by the living legends of orthopedics in our country these living legends have not only shaped orthopedics but through their thought and actions have evolved our society into what it is today a regional organization which is recognized worldwide which last year has partnered with almost 72 orthopedic societies worldwide as we were coming out of the pandemic an organization so vibrant so dynamic that it continues teaching training and encouraging a fresh thought process throughout the entire year through its various activities the seeds of seeking this excellence competitiveness to get better and a camaraderie to walk and work together has come to us from these legends it is these legends that help us stand tall and create a kind of an energy that allows us to achieve our individual and our goals as an entire group and we are grateful again to have you joining us here at the curtain raiser of the wire rock max 2022 the living legends episodes and during the next couple of hours we will be listening to the living legends and their experiences over a lifetime of orthopedics that they're going to share with us i welcome our four living legends today dr kulkarni dr g s kulkarni padma vibhushan dr n s lard dr dilip tanna dr v t ingalhaikar to talk to us today and without much delay i would also welcome our president of the bombay orthopedic society dr rajesh gandhi to welcome you all with his welcome address thank you continue my respected teachers esteemed seniors and dear colleagues bombay orthopedic society bos is an organization with unwavering commitment to the academics and the skill improvement of orthopedics all across the country rome was not built in a day likewise bos has acquired its reputation as one of the most prestigious and vibrant academic organization over the years our teachers and each members of the bombay orthopedic society has contributed to its evolution as a premier academic organization we at bos pay tribute to the legends of who have left their legacies and left imprints on bos we would like to take you to the journey of bos and to the orthopedics in india the genesis of indian orthopedics looking backwards and forwards by none other than our stalwarts our legends dr k v chawal dr g s kulkarni dr nandu lard dr d d tanna dr v t ingal halika thank you thank you abhi and team of wiro for inviting me for this curtain riser program i started my ortho practice in 
five years later than my classmates. My classmates were Dr. Arvind Baudekar, Emin Chahane and Ravindra Vora. After MBBS, I had to do general practice for five years. Arvind and me are classmates from school. He helped me in postgraduate studies. I completed my MS General and MS Artho. Surprisingly, my competitor was an illiterate bone setter. My maternal uncle had a stiff elbow with 45 degrees of fixed flexion deformity. He secretly, without my knowledge, went to this bone setter. And this bone setter was a very strong man and he straightened his upper limb by using his knee as a fulcrum. My uncle almost fainted due to pain and next day when I took x-rays there was fracture dislocation. I told him you are lucky that there is no blood vessels and nerve damage. But this tribe of bone setters has almost vanished. That time there were no subspecialties. We had to do every case from cervical spine to foot, from trauma to tumor. Campbell was our Bible or Gita. It was in two volumes. I used to read at night about surgery and for the next day. A typical OT list is spondylolisthesis. Then we used to do intertransverse fusion, so-called gutter fusion. IT fracture, SP nail was used tendon transfers for foot drop in leprosy patient. I was attached to a leprosy hospital. Osteotomy for correction of post polio deformity. Abscess, incision and drainage. Sarmiento plaster cast for fractured tibia. Artho then and now, today's generation of orthopedic surgeons are lucky because there are phenomenal advancement in technology. For example, take for example an fracture neck of femur. SP nail was used and uh, portable x-ray was taken in OR. For every step x-ray was taken and was sent to development to dark room. After about 5 to 10 minutes uh, the x-rays would come. So uh, about 2 to 4 hours uh, surgery was to be continued. High, there was high incidence of non-union, avian and infection. So Gerdlerstone was the treatment of choice and Austin Moore in the elderly. Poliomyelitis, it's a very pathetic scene. A four-year-old child playing in the evening uh, and next day very crippled for life. The surgery for was limb lengthening and deformity correction. Fortunately, no more polio today. My academic interest and research develop, may, led me to development of my postgraduate institute and central government recognized research center. I completed ICMR research in 1980 and received central government grant of 1 crore 13 lakhs in 1980 amounting today probably six to seven crores. I spent all that for equipment. First was the image intensifier in 1982, then laminar airflow in 1984. Entire set of AO equipment and implants and instruments were purchased. Why India is lagging behind? We have abundant clinical material, hard-working intelligent surgeons, we would have been a world leader for in orthopedics. What is lacking is deep thinking in a different way and in-depth analysis of failures. Publication. 30 years back, China was nowhere in publication. But today, it is at one of the top countries. American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons and Indian subspecialty associations have helped me in my practice. AOS, I used to go once in two years since 1985. Newer developments are learned there and I tried to use them on my patients. 
for example Ilizaro. I learned from Pele at American Academy in 1990 and immediately I started in uh, in India. Last two decades almost every year we are going to American Academy with Dr. Tanna and Sujit. After the American Academy we used to go for one week for sightseeing. I was a member of all the subspecialty associations and actively participated in all meetings. VIROC. I attended all the meetings since 1968 except one. I think VIROC is almost equivalent to American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, but maybe perhaps better because we learn Indian perspective. VIROC was a great help in my practice. Since subspecialties have developed, VIROC has improved tremendously. Trauma then and now. I have, for example, the fracture neck femur again. I have told about Espinel. Today, the three big companies of the world have developed uh, Targon FN, Synthes has developed FNS, Smith and Nipur has developed Conquest. Research at our institute has developed locking DHS and control DHS. The simple DHS and three cancel screws have miserably failed. Dual implants. Currently, dual implants have done an excellent results in complex fractures. This is a tibial plateau fracture and 14 month old non union of subtrochanter fracture. This is a case of severe infection. Antibiotic red alone failed. Antibiotic rod and ilizaro and once the infection was controlled, dual implant was used. Doctors and burnout phenomena. I studied the burnout phenomena. My doctor friends are often bored, tired and left good practice due to burnt out phenomena. They are so busy in practice that they have no time to take care of their physical and mental health. The main, this is the main cause of burnout. Health is priority number one. New research in neuroscience in brain, how to sharpen your memory and prevent dementia and Alzheimer. Advanced brain imaging for mapping areas of anger, fear, etc. by 9 Tesla MRI. We are using only 3 Tesla MRI. These 9 Tesla MRI are very costly and used only for research work and is available only in big cities like London and New York. Functioning of the brain, heart are all studied by this 9 m Tesla. This study of neuroscience has shown that neural cells, new neurofibrils and blood vessels grow in the brain, what is called as neuropublicity, neuroplasticity, by aerobic exercises, weight training exercises and yoga, change in diet. Sound sleep 8 hours is one more important factor. Stimulating brain by various methods. Modern meditation to calm the brain. There is robust evidence of all these for all these things. And also these things are also useful for improvement in general health. This is the brain mapping of by 9 Tesla for brain imaging. Now this is the above one is for fear, for pain and for depression. This is MRI of Einstein's brain. He was a great violin player. This brain was stolen by a pathologist. There is a big story about it. Uh, scientific exercise consists of aerobic, walking, swimming and muscle strengthening 
daily 30 minutes for four times a week and stretching yoga for 10 minutes breathing meditation for 10 minutes so you must use about one hour and 20 minutes for your health for your body scientific exercises regular exercise has shown improved memory skill creativity reduced risk of dementia and Alzheimer's aerobic exercise improves cardiorespiratory function and general health to food direct relation with functioning of the brain what to eat green leafy vegetables spinach etc salad vegetable vegetarian diet however grilled and boiled fish is allowed fresh fruits berries preferably two meals a day and fasting is very very helpful maybe intermittent or 5-2 formula what not to eat is fried foods butata vada pakoda french fries potato chips and red meat avoid junk food deserts and bakery products sleep is important reduce sleep interferes with memory respect biological clock of the body sleep eat work at scheduled fixed time do not take drinks or pills for sleep stimulating brain is another important factor by learning new skills new language anything new uh, is important constant learning throughout the life is another important factor for brain stimulation reading chess bridge avoid multitasking which is taxing the brain too much thinking is a restless mind mental tension surgeons are under tremendous tensions due to heavy load of work competition today's fast life and rowdy society chronic stress worry fear affect memory and health by shortening telomere mindful and compassionate meditation currently popular in the west mindfulness awareness attentiveness are the same being fully attentive in being in the present moment doing all day routine work with full attention and no other thought mindfulness stops negative thinking what is mindfulness it is to be in the present moment paying attention to what is happening inside our mind and body as well as outside keep watchful eye on all thoughts emotions and feelings living in the now ego I are is absent tension is reduced meditation vagal breathing focus your attention to this simple action of breathing air going in and out for 10 minutes during this period no thinking because excessive thinking is a very troublesome mind so if the thoughts arise during this breathing you stop it and again concentrate on breathing breathing is the basis of relaxation calms your mind a very simple and perhaps the best type of meditation as I am I never miss my exercise and gym strictly follow healthy diet I follow the philosophy of choiceless awareness of Jay Krishnamurti and Eckhart Tolle. I still attend OPD, visit OT, occasionally scrub to assist my associate, read a lot. All hospital work I take it as a joyful meditation. As of today, I am healthy. Thank you for inviting me along with three great idols, Dr. Chauver, Nandu and Dilip. Thank you, uh, Professor Dr. G. S. Kulkarni, sir, for that wonderful talk. Uh, sir is a veteran who has attended close to 50 Virocs and is into practice for close to six decades. That were nothing but the words of gold which lived, and it was indeed a nostalgic moment for all of us going down the timeline. Next, our next legend 
needs no introduction. He is Professor Dr. Nanda Kishor Lard, sir, a Padma Bhushan awardee and a Professor of Orthopedics and head of the Department of Sion Hospital, where he worked for close to 31 years. Again, a veteran into this field for close to five and a half decades and a rich experience. Let's go through his various <clears throat> uncertainties. I thank you for inviting me to participate in this symposium of Era of Living Legends. My subject is glorious uncertainties. And I fully agree that life is uncertainties. But you can make it certain in some areas. I have been in orthopedics for 56 years. I think today orthopedic surgery is a super speciality. It joined alone <laughs> as a solution. And surgeon chooses his speciality. I think today we have advances in implants, so much so that you have fragment specific implants. I'm not too sure whether trauma produces a specific fragments, but <laughs> however, we have these implants and they are useful. I think joint replacement has come to stay, and technology is one thing which has assured us of a long-term good result. I think today technology had made a lot of difference. Whether it is mandatory, I do not know, but at least scopies have improved the result in joints to a great extent. One must not get carried away by technology. I feel technology is a useful servant, but a dangerous master. So you control the technology, technology should not control you. I think we need to go back to ABCs of orthopedics. For any case, one has to have proper analysis of the problem. History taking is an R and clinical examination is something which is mandatory, which is a vital aspect of orthopedic case management. And management without diagnosis is a futile experience. Let me tell you a very interesting case. This young executive saw me with bilateral hip pain. When I saw him and took his history, he was working indoors for 12 hours, had no holidays, had a very poor diet. He had an MRI which showed a vascular necrosis and was told that he needs core decompression and bone graft. Clinical findings, I didn't find anything. So I did his vitamin D3, which was very low. And I gave a course of vitamin D3 and mind you, he recovered. So I think good history taking and good analysis of a case is vital. I think the basic fundamentals in bone and soft tissue healings have not changed. The current advances have only made a qualitative and quantitative change in the repair, reconstruction, remodeling and replacement. It's a forgotten art of close reduction and casting if we need to come back. And I think it should be like a sculptor. I still feel non-operative treatment will be very useful to you because what you do is you do not disturb the blood supply. You give that blood supply, put it together and it will heal. So basic concept in trauma surgery, whether you operate or don't operate, get a reduction, achieve stability, Put the bones together, do not disturb the environment, let the body do the rest, art of surgery be propagated and promoted. Here is a case where I had done a percutaneous square nailing in an 18 year old girl. She has no scar, the fracture is healed, she has full function. So I feel it's a surgeon who uses an implant to heal the fracture. Next important point is the attitude, attitude of the surgeon. One must care for the patient, one must be compassionate, one must have conscience, believe in collaboration. Cooperation is important and attain conferences to enhance expertise. Computer helps in documentation and research, that's a useful tool. So diagnosis is made by the orthopedician. X-ray still remains the best tool. MRI, CT scan and others aid in planning to achieve a desired result. Only in occult regions, 
way of life central. Technology has come to the way. Imaging is very useful. Imaging things where has made all the difference. So today I have newer subjective techniques, biomaterials and biomechanics. So we have to enlighten with the new techniques, analyze their role and rationale, but do not get enlightened with their applications immediately and not to follow unless proper training and facilities you have. The EO Foundation, in addition to the basic principles, said to achieve any results, you need to have good environment, excellent instrumentation, and training. And I still feel more than anything, these are three most important aspects of success of a surgeon. So, friends, the need of the hour is not nailers, platers, replacers, but well trained orthopedic surgeons. A good result is outcome of good planning and execution. Creating a good facilities to achieve desired goal is a mandatory quality. It is the result of bilateral knee replacement. And you see at the end of 20 years on your left and 23 on your right, no wear, no loosening, no instability, and we are used both first and second generation implants. In cases you find it difficult or you want to plan, high suspicion. In failed cases, occult legions is a virtue which help you to deal with success in challenging cases. Higher learning helps in problem solving. Don't look at the MRI as a photograph. Try to analyze how what is that MRI and what does it show you. So open mind is very important. Infection is biggest challenge in orthopedics. Prevention prophylaxis has to be practiced. Curative planning, proper workup helps in control. Understand chronic infection needs treatment of focus, not antibiotics. Learn whether it's a pyogenic infection or other infection like tuberculosis, whether it's acute or chronic. So what you need to do? The main important biofilm and bug identification. Gram stair still remains the bugbear of diagnosis. Bacter culture is always useful in cases, but in joint infection, synovial alpha defensive and leukocyte esterase helps you for early diagnosis of infection. In a chronic infection, Eliminate the foci. Do a thorough debris bar. Clean out the cavity. If necessary, do use antibiotic cement. Negative pressure wound therapy is useful. And then you can do bone grafting. And my personal feeling is in large defects, a rotation flap, a free flap is a very good idea for early, quick, and good healing. So, instability is the prime cause of case failures. Achieving good stability, access alignment assures good result, whether it is failed fracture, spine fixation, joint replacement, or any other problem. So, you must avoid injudicious use of internal fixation. What does it lead to? When you do that, you add further trauma to already damaged soft tissues. You end up devascularization of bone fragments. There is loss of vital bone inducing substance and increased chances of infection. These are my teachers. And they told me the basic fundamentals of how to And still the need to be a surgeon, to be very open mind, eager to learn. For me, they have been my legends. Let me show you what I learned from there. In the case of 48 year diabetic who suffered a road traffic accident, he had decreased ejection fraction only 
so very risky for Anastasia. Presented two days after injury and had no primary treatment at all. Understand innovation is a part to progress. With Dr. Jo B. B. Joshi hand surgeon, I developed this small joint fixator. I don't think the strength of fixator is important. The role of fixator to aid the strength of soft tissues and alignment. And what you need to get is primary reduction and use the fixator as a neutralizing device. And once it heals, you can plan any treatment you like. See what happened. He had a wound days on the right side. So we used a modern dressing known as biofilm. And we need to use the collagen dressing, it healed. And we did not have to have a bone graft, a skin graft. It healed in four months after the functional cast. And look at the result. This is the result. Uh, we will agree that innovative methods will help you to make it better. So, in my opinion, friends, fracture care is still the gateway to being a good specialist. Art of reduction is still the basis of success. Non operative, minimally invasive, reconstructive surgeries have a role. Modern implants and instruments have improved the quality of care. So, a living bone has the ability to hold, heal, provided surgeon creates an environment conducive to healing. So, the need of the hour is to have patience, concentration, hard work, being meticulous in your surgeries, and build up a stamina. I suggest spend 20 minutes doing exercise every day. And take off on a Sunday and go for a run. So, to me, Bombay Orthopedic Society has been a great institution, which helped me to understand importance of camaraderie, interpersonal respect, teaching, organizing ability, and leadership quality. These are all the men I had the fortune to be associated with. They are pioneering orthopedic teachers with an analytical approach, balanced views, and an open mind, a virtue which is not replaceable. So what did Bombay Society did, orthopedic society did to me? It developed my leadership quality. I became a secretary of BOS, president of BOS, president of Indian Society of Surgery at Hand, president of Indian Orthoplasty Association, president of Indian Orthopedic Society, Indian Orthopedic Association, we must change this. IOA. Trustee of AO Foundation, Switzerland. Member of every super specialty organization. AIM. Learn, 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 and continue forever. So I was fortunate enough to be a trustee of AO Foundation. Not that I was something different from other orthopedic surgeons, but my attitude to learn, my respect to my teacher, an open mind. An appreciation of my associates helped me to go there. With an association of 93 surgeons from 100 countries. And you get a lot of good information when you meet them. Friends, all work and no play is not good for the soul. What you do today is not because how great surgeon you are, but for a but for a good family support. So I feel there is more in life. Then in orthopedics. You may feel that monitor gains is the right way. It's vital to spend time with your family when your children are young. Please do remember time lost is vital. Grown up children will go their way. And most important, your wife will not be young. So I have a gem of a family my wife, my daughter. My grandchildren, and I have a farmhouse with a small river where I don't shy away to sit my grandchild in my lap and enjoy and make them feel happy. If you have problems and if you have circumvented the bottle in difficult trauma, don't forget the generals who are available today. So, friends, time is not measured by passing of years, but by one does. 
one feels and one achieves. Today is me and my wife. Success, our life is following a principle of agriculture. What is that principle? Agree to whatever your wife says. Life becomes easy and she becomes keen listener. So that's my that's my friendly advice to you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for that wonderful talk. It is said that shallow man believe in luck, while strong man believe in cause and effect. And Lord Sir personified that. As a professor at Sion Hospital, he was instrumental in starting the first trauma care center in India and also started the fracture fixation course in parallel to the AO trauma fixation course. Our next legend again needs no introduction. Professor Dr. Dilip Tanna, who is regarded as the father of interlocking surgeries in India, is also regarded as the Bhishma Pitama of trauma in India. He was also the first Indian to buy a Siam. So let's hear the golden words from Professor Dr. Tanna, sir. Over to you, sir. अरे हमें तो लोग लीजेंड कहने लगे हम भी कभी जवान थे और क्रिम भी थे दिल तन्ना इस फर्गोटन नाउ आई हैव टू अपीयर लाइक अ डिग्निफाइड मेच्योर पर्सन एस आई एम बीइंग लेबल्ड एस अ लीजेंड शर्मिला टागोर नाउ सेवेंटी एट माय ओल्ड क्रश टिल लुक्स फ्रेश डू आई आल्सो एट दे एट टू फोर I do not know if I get plastic surgery. Will it make a difference? अरे छोड़ो ये सब बातें। बुढ़ा होने के बाद लोग अभी लीजन तो बोलने लगे। Born in Kabul, they be Kuchu ghettos, where one when I became MBBS, there were only two or three graduates in my small Kuchu surroundings. Later in that Kaka Mama cricket gully surroundings. I was the only postgraduate. Paniyagiri was in our blood. Money was our guru, guru driving force. In college, just for saving ten paisa, most of us walked one bus stop. Not that it was needed because of poverty, but just to save money. Just. Why waste money? Probably the reason I never could buy Mercedes in lifetime, not even now. At that time, my surrounding boys went to college only for stamp of a college for their marriage proposals, and very few finished bachelor's degree in college. They joined father's shop and started doing danda at the age of twenty-three, twenty-four years of age. They learn broken English while on business. Medical admission I got in Nair. When I got call from JJ after that Nair admission, I had to lose hundred and fifty rupees which I had paid in Nair. So I didn't change. Not that my father couldn't afford that, but just why waste a guru psychology? And later on, to me, it became a life-changing good fortune. I came in contact with Dr. Chauhan, and it changed my life. Thank God, I didn't change now. This is me and Dr. Chauhan, made many many years later. I was and probably still is a fun-loving sports playing guy. I played every game available in school: langri, ututu, which is now known as kabaddi, volleyball, swimming, water polo, and badminton. And later tennis, and now I have settled in a slow game of golf, and generally enjoyed any fun thing which was available. Cricket, of course, was and is today my passion. At one stage, only for a few days, I competed with Farooq Engineer, who became a Test player and a Test wicketkeeper later. I trained then with Rusi Surti and Farooq Engineer, who played for India. I played for school and colleges, but 
my chess playing was a life changing hobby. Only four of us played chess in our Naira office. There was a tournament announced, and my friend gave my name in the tournament. I was not even aware of it. As only four of us played, it was a direct semi final. My opponent couldn't come for the semi final, so I came in final and I lost. But I was number two in the college, so represented our college in a chess intercollegiate tournament and got three marks. In my posting for house surgeon and registration for orthopedics, where I beat my opponent by one mark, chess, Jindabad. In my first year out of 60, only 16 of us passed for the test. And however, they, second MEBS, we saw each and every picture came in town. In second MEBS prelims, I got six to seven marks out of 100 in pharmacology and pathology. And professors called few of us and threatened to not give form to us. Dr. Kekere, our professor, is a very kind hearted person. He knew all of us well. We all passed in upper grades. Like this, Haste Khelte MS Obe and Dr. Chobal came into my life. And we all who came in his Chatrasaya started taking orthopedics with a different. We all read, argued, tried to prove each other deficient in healthy way and progress. Thanks to Dr. Chobal. These are the four books I wrote later as a, for a practicing orthopod. Tanna's interlocking book, first one, orthopedic dead pitch, proximal femur fractures and orthopedic secret. This was one of the first book and this book was dedicated to Dr. Chauvin. It is the tribute to the person who has the most remarkable approach to teaching. According to him, learning is not just gathering information and storing it. He made tireless effort to teach all his students to think independently. He inspired and encouraged all of us to rise to our highest potentials. He broke the old tradition that the master should be obeyed blindly. He strongly believed that learning is not at the feet of the master, but by arguing and discussing with him. In this way, the master and the disciple both learn. This is the most important lesson to be learned in life today. Not only in all fields, but also in every field of life. I was a very strict teacher and harassed my RMOs only in orthopedic before they got their MS. One old Nairite meeting where now all those students were in 50s. When we met all the time, which was discussed in how Dr. Tanna harassed us during our RMO training. Dr. Mrs. Dilip Nadkarvi, who said at that time we were not married, and after every ward round, my boyfriend Dilip Nadkarvi would come and lie down in my lap and cry profusely for an hour. After that meeting, where everything went haywire, they talk about this all the time, but are grateful. They all have become excellent surgeons. And now they are my best friends. Then after that, I wrote this book, Orthopedic Tidbits. The ward rounds were the ones which all my residents, including senior lecturers, were apprehensive about. During those four hours of exhaustive probing and hostile rounds, few weak-hearted cried, but never passed. If they did, they knew they would neither survive nor gain. During those rounds, all of us got galvanized and read and thought about orthopedics and innovation. With our discussions, all of us got upgraded in orthopedics. This book is dedicated to all those who suffered those rounds with me and contributed to the growth of all of us. I am ever indebted to them, but definitely not sorry to have helped them. These are all those bright students of mine Dr. Rajesh Maniyar, now a prominent joint replacement surgeon. Dr. Vinod Lahiri, spine surgeon, professor in KEM, he became afterwards. And he has created so many spine surgeons. He is Dr. Vinod Agarwal, who is one of the prime surgeons in Lilawati Hospital in Bombay. 
This is me, this is Dr. Sanjay Desai, who is now a shoulder surgeon, very famous for Shah Rukh Khan. This is Dr. Anand. Dr. Anand is a spine surgeon, now settled in Hollywood, and he has been an international faculty for so many meetings. This is Dr. Dilip Natkani, whom we just now talked about, and he is an arthroscopic surgeon. This is one of my students who don't take orthopedic as seriously as he had taken it earlier. But he enjoyed his life and he did many more things apart from orthopedic. And he wrote during my 75th birthday, Sir, you flew in not because we had wings, but because you told us we could fly. People labeled me as the father of interlocking baby. I did go around all over the country and taught interlocking in those days. Number of workshops I did. I traveled from east to west. One of my colleagues, Dr. Mukesh Dr. he was my anesthesiologist. He mentioned on one of those nights, on Saturdays after the workshops, we would be resting and with the drinks, we were talking to each other. Where some of the orthosurgeons will come and say, Dr. Tanna, you have taught hundreds of orthopedic surgeons. That is the time when Dr. Mukesh Dr. he mentioned, yes. Apart from hundreds of orthopedic surgeons, he had helped lakhs of people who are treating, being treated by those orthopedic surgeons. And that sentence has kept me going even today, teaching, which I feel is probably useful to some people. I have a large library of non ortho books at home. I read all of them. They are not decorated. All of them I read at times again and again. I often quote from these books. These are one of my favorite books. Outsider Colin Wilson, Outsider with Albert Camus, In Praise of Idleness by Tan Russell, and of course, Anne Rand, Fountainhead, and the Atlas Shrug. Non author books which have touched me are given the, on this topic, talks on many occasions for these books. I play intense game of bridge, and today, my time is spent quite a lot in bridge in the evenings. But that is not all me. Fun-loving, dancing DDT, all of you have seen. This is with my wife. Fortunately, she also enjoys dancing. This is with my family. We travel every year somewhere in the world. The whole family gets together and we have a hell of a time. We enjoy it, all of us. This is our true tours with our Orthopedic gangs, Kulkarni and Babulkar. This is to Antarctica. Again, this is to Antarctica. This is to Arctic for Aurora Borealis, as you can see here in the sky. This is, I am fond of a passionate about scuba. And the zip liner, I did it when I was fairly old in late 70s. This is also in late 70s. This is all into late 70s when I got the opportunity, time and energy till there.
friends and old college friends. They send me this about Bhagwan. But I am still in a different phase of life. Me and my three students play golf. Here, this is uh, Dr. Sanjay Desai, me, Dr. Dilip Nathkari, and Rajesh Manya. And we all took a training from this golf trainer. And we all keenly took extensive training from her. We all had a deterioration of our game after we took training from her. But age takes over. When now I see a pretty young girl, you always think of your grandchild. But the golf training is only with that blonde. Huh? This is the small chalak of my life. And aap logo ne to usko legion bana diya. Baut, baut shukriya. Thank you. Thank you, Tannar sir, for that wonderful talk. He has indeed enlightened this Saturday evening. It is said that destination, destiny should not be a matter of chance. It should be a matter of choice. It's not a thing to be waited for. It's a thing to be achieved. And Tanna sir personifies that very well. Our next legend, again, needs no introduction. Dr. V. T. Ingal Harikar, sir, Professor of Orthopedics and Spine Surgery at the prestigious Lokmanya Tilak Municipal Medical College, where he worked for more than a quarter of a century. And currently, he has moved over to Jupiter Law Hospital, Thani. If there is one thing which can describe him, that's he is a master of all. A very enthusiastic teacher a great administrator, an enthusiastic organizer, an ace musician, a talented singer, a great photographer, a certified yoga teacher, and a, with a keen interest in the regional literature. He also has many firsts to his clinics, uh, to his credit. He started the first spine clinic at Cyan Hospital. That was the one of its kind in India then. He started the first back school. He conducted the first cadaveric spine course in India after he had attended a seven day cadaver course at USA and felt that if one has to be a spine surgeon, one needs to understand the basics of anatomy. And he also conducted the first non surgical care of lumbar spine workshop. So, over to you, sir. Over to Dr. Ingal Halikar, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Right at the outset, I would like to uh, say thanks to Dr. Rajesh Gandhi, Dr. Abhijit Kare, and Dr. Ashish Fadnis, and other executive members of Bombay Orthopedic Society. I feel honored and humbled. Well, friends, legends are folk stories about people carried over generations and generations. I don't know how long we will be remember, how many generations will continue to know to her. Anyhow, whatever we are today, uh, we owe it to a lot of people. Of course, parents who instill the basic scars in me. Uh, my teachers, I must make a special mention about Dr. K.V. Chauvin, who not only taught me how to do orthopedic surgery, but also taught me how to live life with a straight spine, upright behavior in life. Uh, I had lots of mentors, and these three people who spoke before me have been my mentors in various ways. We were lucky to have lots of role models. Uh, it's unfortunate that the current generations do not have those money role models, role models. Uh, Right in the early days of life, we were taught the sanskar made on us where that what do you want people to talk about you at the time of your condolence meeting? 
try to behave that way all through your life. If you want people to call you Bhala Manas, do like that right from the beginning of that. Many of you must be wondering why four of us sitting are still practicing. We all love clinical medicine. We all love interacting with our patients. It fosters and maintains our self-identity. We feel good and happy that we continue to be useful to the people. Of course, the age has slowed us to some extent, but we'll continue. Till such time as we feel that we are safe to our patients. Um, after a particular stage in life, earning money has no relevance. So that is not the cause of our continuing. The surgery or seeing an implant loaded x-ray does not turn us on. We believe that our continuing full-fledged work may deprive juniors of their work. We also believe that till such time as we are practicing, we owe it to our patients that we are up to date in the knowledge. Therefore, you will see all four of us sitting in the front row during most of the meetings and observing what's going on. Uh, many people ask me, why do I never get tired and bored? Well, if you love your work and your patients, you're not seen fatigued and tired. You never get tired. Or even after prolonged surgery, you don't get tired. Well, how do you love your patients? Every patient who comes to you must become your lifetime of a friend. Every patient must get a feel that you are genuinely interested in his well-being. This must not be a drama or a nautanke. And therefore, we don't sell surgery to the patient. We let patient buy it. We never coerce or pressurize the patient to undergo surgery, giving him false threats and complications. Well, I love clinical teaching. I really love teaching. I love it genetically. My both parents were teachers. My grandparents were teachers. Two of my great-grandfathers were teachers. So it's in my blood. It gives me immense pleasure. I have been teaching through the life, in school days, as undergraduate, as PG, as professor. Whatever venue of teaching is there, you will find me. I love my students. Innumerable number of them are themselves reaching eminence in the career now. And they make us feel proud and perfect. Well, medical profession is a stressful affair. Didn't I know this? Of course I knew this. And for me, stress was a collector's item, like this vehicle. I used to collect stress. Uh, friends, success in medical profession comes at a price. It doesn't come free. I did lead a very hectic life, very stressful. I had a stress point in 1982 when I held Vairoc in Thane single-handedly. I had no help. I had a cardiac episode followed that. The 1985 to 2002, the birth of Association of Spine Surgeons of India and early nursing was a stressful period. There was a long run family illness. My elder daughter suffered from renal failure. Eventually, we lost her after transplant. All that. 1988 89, I was a pain in neck. I was highly irritable. I was very irritating. I slept poorly. My blood sugar was fluctuating. Uh, I cursorily glanced. Newspapers, the phone calls were often avoided, medical journals were unread, journal subscriptions lapsed, social occasions were missed. I was completely consumed by my role as an orthopod, as a passionate ortho teacher, and a exercise mother and father. <clears throat> I was missing my childhood and young age friends. I was missing my music, singing, violin playing, stage performances. My dramatics, my stage, my poetry, literary means, my drawing, painting, my volleyball, trekking, my photograph. I was in fact heading towards a crisis. Your stress profile always worsens. If you don't remember that your family members also participate in and suffer from your stress. Our crisis also affects our patients. A chronic physician stress causes depersonalization, emotional disconnections with our patients, what we call compassion fatigue, distance relationship with patients, cynicism, 
rough treatment and there is significant increase in major and minor medical errors. What happened to me? Was that a burnout? What are the signs of burnout? Well, there is emotional and physical exhaustion, depersonalization, as I said, low sense of personal accomplishment, low esteem about quality of your own work, neglect of commitments, drop in efficiency. There is increased rate of alcohol, drug abuse and suicides. Main reason, acute and chronic cumulative stress. In 1958, a new physician's oath was formulated called Declaration of Geneva. In that, it is great emphasis given on physicians' own well-being and health. Well, what is success? As per today's definition, voluminous practice with huge earning and all the frills is a success. Therefore, practice is volume-driven. A lot of new electronic devices, there is easy accessibility of doctors, medical day is now 24 hours. We even use Bluetooth earbuds during surgery and keep talking to others. Our attention is divided. Doesn't that patient deserve our full attention when we are operating upon him? It's unfair. Well, was I successful? Somehow, this success model did not make me really happy. I, it never lured me in a true sense. Doing small day-to-day -day tasks successfully, excellently, made me feel good about myself. I slowly learned that the stress, learned that small micro steps in patient care managed well give success rather than a huge multi-level spinal stabilization and having an exciting looking X-ray. I slowly learned that stress can be best controlled by having a meaningful life. I established ASSA in 1985. It gave meaning to my life, though it was stressful. I started first back school of India in 1986. It was fulfilling. This was a new surprise turn in my path. <coughs> Around 55, my desire for career growth plateaued out. I was not bothered about growth. Was again a new burnout? No, it was not a burnout. My practice continued as patient, passionately as before. I have continued till today what I loved and enjoyed most, that is connecting with the patient, operating, teaching students, conducting workshops, lecturing, everything I enjoyed and I'm still doing that. Friends, for all said and done, all doctors' lives are stressful. Orthopods' lives are also badly stressed. We get stressed every day. So annual two-week vacation in Switzerland is not enough as a de-stressor. You need daily or as frequent dose of some de-stressor. What is my definition of a real de-stressor? While I am doing something or pursuing something, if I forget that I have a serious patient under my care in ICU for that period, that thing is a de-stress. After this period, now my other hobbies have started intellectually challenging me in different ways. Now I am driven by other things as much as medicine. Uh, when I approach something new, I try to learn something new. I am a young, enthusiastic and wise. I work hard on them. I enjoy success coming out of that. Well, I feel everybody must have some relaxing hobby. Fine arts are most useful towards this. Music, drawing, painting, photography, crafts, sculpturing, Reading, writing, everything, all these are wonderful. Physical fitness for solution activities like sports, swimming, diving, trekking, mountaineering, marathon, etc. Friends, please don't wait till retirement or don't say, My son is doing final MBBS, he will pass his MS, he will join my practice, then I'll do it. You don't wait for your faculties to go down, don't wait for a 
कार्डियक एपिसोड और हेमिप्लेजिया और समथिंग और पार्किसनिज्म एंड स्टार्ट डिज एक्टिविटी ऑफ दैट स्टार्ट ऑल ऑफ देम टूडे इट सेल्फ जो रिकोगनाइज दिस पर्सन यक्ष गाना इज ए ट्रेडिशनल नॉर्थ कन्नड़ा डांस ही इज इंटरनेशनली फेमस एक्सपोनेंट इज नो बडी एल्स देन अवर ओन फ्रेंड डॉक्टर भास्कर आनंद कुमार वेल फ्रेंड्स यू यू ऑल नो अबाउट द फ्रैंक नेचर यू दिस इज डॉक्टर सुधीर पटवर्धन द वर्ल्ड आर्टिस्ट he was a radiologist who gave up radiology to pursue this his paintings are auctioned in south by london and in new york this is frank nater you have inspiring people in murad lala they have continued to practice as an onco surgeon and he does a lot of thing the first doctor to scale mount everest uh, why are these people standing above the crowd they are passionate about what they are doing there's a glint in their eyes they the passion motivates them they get up every day to do something more than just make a money uh, successful people do what unsuccessful people are unwilling to do well for all of these things begin as a dabbler do it with consistency with a focus you will become master in that create work life balance framework you will be happy and you will be good doctor you will be happy family person discover and follow your passion with a focused energy i always believe and it is confirmed and proved that active habit which involves physical activity is better than passive activity like reading but it must be engrossing enough the indulgence should be frequent regular not sporadic not by annual you see we have our own people doing this i so frequently sing i so frequently participate in this these are two of our own friends who indulge in music i had evenings with lots of things i led parallel life for all different varieties i had a lot of evening with yoga and holistic medicine 1979 to 81 i did lot of studies about yoga asana in terms of spinal biomechanics in terms of spinal uses muscular uses and i rationalized yoga asana in the perspective of spinal anatomy physiology biomechanics i was a guest faculty teacher in three major yoga institutes of mumbai for over 20 years and i tried to put yoga practices in our india on a scientific medical background i have guided many research projects in yoga and for uh, this uh, point i have got many awards i had an inning with poets i have published two books the third one is getting ready uh, there are two major literary awards i got for poetry uh, i have presented audiovisual programs of my poetry and my musical compositions in india and abroad since 1996 i conducted workshops on poetry writing i wrote title songs for four marathi tv serials i wrote songs for a marathi movie manini and this song was nominated for the best marathi song of the year <coughs> well these are my books these are various trophies i got uh, my innings with music music is in my family i am the fourth generation musician in my family my great grandfather was a darbar court musician in kolhapur and kagal my father was a musician and singer and artist i have studied music from childhood but in 1996 97 i did diploma in music composing and music direction from mumbai university department of music then in the same course i became a faculty teacher for two years i have composed music for three marathi stage plays i have done two cd albums of marathi poems i have composed anthem songs for indian orthopedic association assi bombay spine society bombay orthopedic society jupiter hospital sanskrit festival and many others oh, well i teach music i learn music i conduct workshops on voice production and singing 
I also write on these topics. These are my music CDs. Some more CDs are in pipeline. I have been conducting music therapy for various kinds of disorders. Parkinsonism, neuromusic therapy. I have been using music therapy in various medical conditions since 1990. I give talks on music therapy. I have contributed to the press and to a book called Indian Music Therapy. I uh, conducted projects and also workshops in music therapy in five institutes for physically demanding people. I am founder member of Indian Music Therapy Association and also member of International Association for Music and Medicine. Hmm? Well, creative art makes me very happy. Look at these uh, phone covers. I have been doing this for a long time and many people come and request me. Sir, mujhe mere phone cover pe nikal ke de. I have been doing digital painting for a while. The process is very enjoyable. Uh, I had my instruments lying idle for quite some time. And Suddenly, I decided to use them. I uh, was inspired by a couple of video films. And then I started carving on the wood. This is one such carving. Uh, this is a block of bone, which I have marked out. Then this is the cut. Then you keep removing wood, wood as is required. And and eventually this is what you get this is made from ordinary wood and the friendship with 3d vertebra means i had no model sitting in front of me this is totally from my memory and imagination well i have used Creatively is bone skills. This is my drawing. These are various wood sculptures that I have done. You can see here plain board, the drawing on that. You start digging out the bone. At the end of this is what you get. You have another one or you can even have a 3D dig out like this. Uh, I have a farmhouse in Kamgad, and he, I even retrieve a bone to retrieve wood from there. I go and cut the branches, process them myself, and prepare wood for my use. This is the one on which I am currently working. Uh, when you go to Kandala from here, there is a long tunnel at the top. When you go to get out of the trail, there's a long wall on the left hand side. You see so many monkeys perched up on that. This is exactly how they look at you through your glass window. Uh, this is a wood. I took this out. This is a Diwali Kandil. Now remember, this one is not a painted. This design is by burning the wood using soldering iron. This is called pyrography. This is a swan, would like to say this at the end, that don't ignore your talent, the instinct or the bug that bites you. There's nobody who does not have some or other talent. You have to search for it. Don't ignore it. People will help you to find out. 
that's why we have hobby promotion center coming up in the fire of kaleidoscope nurture it don't postpone it till a b c d or till terminal cardio respiratory failure or dementia friends if you see work email on weekends why can't you see movie on work days once again i thank you all for your inviting me thanks a lot thank you sir for that wonderful talk it was an encouraging and a motivating words and sir has given us many lessons that i we should be trying to inculcate in our day to day working and thought process uh, any more words sir from you so you like with us uh no thanks for calling um i i want to just tell people that these talents and hobbies must be fostered they must be promoted and therefore this year we have a unique uh, uh, event in the viroc we are going to do talent display exhibition uh, called ortho kaleidoscope this is a concept uh, ashish fandis and me together have developed and in that we are going to have paintings drawings photographs from our ortho delegates we also have a music cafe where lots of people will be singing dancing playlist will be there we also have a hobby promotion center whereby if i want to learn something from somebody the whole, all the resources the pros and cons the requirements whom to contact how to go about how to develop will be learned from the mentors who are doing all that and all their authors i think time has come probably first time in any conference this is being held this is i would say an extension a uh, multi participatory extension of non academic sessions of all our meetings and conferences so i i would request all of you to go and attend them it will be in the same venue during all three days of our viroc thank you again for inviting me first thank you sir for that input again so as we come to the flag end of this program let me give you a brief update of our conference viroc viroc the annual conference of bombay orthopedic society is considered the mecca of orthopedic academics and is attended by orthopedic surgeons from all over the country regarded as the benchmark of all the orthopedic conferences viroc receives the best faculty from all over the world delivering and sharing knowledge with their peers this year the theme for viroc is motivate innovate and integrate redefining orthopedics viroc is going to be a four days event starting from 28 december to 31 december 2022 the first day is a virtual day and in on this day we will be showing in box surgeries and try to cover over 100 surgeries across all the sub specialties of orthopedics the main conference will be a three day event which will be held from 29 to 31 december 2022 over 100 sessions will be held across four halls at the venue this time we have shifted over to a new venue that's geo world convention center where events come to life geo world convention center is today country's foremost venue for best in class exhibitions conventions and meeting it offers highest standards of technology and designs and it is also situated in the nucleus of the city today that's the bandar kurla complex yeah we tend to go beyond the conventional and offer you more than what you would have expected during this conference all the customary plenary sessions will be held including the most coveted dr k s masala wala best paper award for original research work also case based scenarios work uh, 
sessions will be held emphasis will be given on clinical scenarios over 20 workshops covering spine joint replacement arthroscopy fracture fixation extra uh, iliolateral ring fixators will be covered also we will be having a uh, different zones for the robots which have been introduced in joint replacement surgery we received an enthusiastic response where we got over 362 abstracts that was very encouraging and it has broken all the past records of viro also till date we have got more than 550 registrations with another 45 days to go as dr vt ingal halikar sir said this time what's new in the conference is we are trying to include a session where one can showcase their skills beyond orthopedics this session has been labeled as kaleidoscope where there will be art exhibition hobby persuasion promotion centers people can showcase their themes as well as their love for music yeah it's not the conference is growing in all the possible ways we have got a area spread over 1 lakh square feet where 50000 square feet has been dedicated for trade and we will be having close to 100 stalls in this area and also as we all know bombay is known for its nightlife and the way we party this time we will leave no stone unturned and we will be celebrating for all the three nights that's 28 20, uh, the uh, 29 30 and 31st the 31st night where we will be welcoming the new year would indeed be a memorable one for all of us and the the accommodation just across the road at the geo world we have booked two hotels that hotel trident and hotel sofitel believe me they are just a walking distance just one need to cross the road and get into the center i thank the entire executive committee of the bombay orthopedic society for offering us a whole hearted support for this annual event with folded hands i request you to come forward and register for this one and only one conference that's viroc max 2022 where we would like you to participate and share your knowledge as well as go back home with the best memories you ever had today i uh, over to dr ashish fadnis who is my uh, who is the organizing secretary for this event thank you very much once again thank you uh, to all the speakers the dignitaries and it was a very very stimulating and uh, a really uh, a good take home points that we can reflect on and imbibe very early on in our practice at all levels of uh, our career uh, i would like to thank uh, dr rajesh gandhi dr abhijit kare my uh, co organizing secretary and uh, the organizing chairman of wiroc and most importantly all the delegates who have stuck with us and uh, the people who are watching and uh, a humble bow in respect and uh, a really humbling uh, experience to listen to uh, dr g s kulkarni dr nanda kishore lad dr tanna and our dear dr ingrid hikar sir thank you very much and thank you very much to ortho tv and uh, stay tuned for another of such interesting session where we will be talking about orthopedicians who have made a difference Uh, in their careers and to the practice uh, next week thank you very much thank you good night and see you back on next saturday at the same time 9 pm on 26 november 2022 with the second episode of curtain razor with where we will be going through the era of eminent teachers bye bye and good night from the organizing team of wireof match 2022